So the same goes, the next Google is Google, but how they're gonna fare with the rise of ChatGPT. Now they have been very innovative in the past and they've also made some good acquisitions, YouTube uh, being an extremely valuable asset now, along with obviously search that they have and the many other things. But the thing that has spooked a few investors is that ad revenue has slowed down and obviously the rise of ChatGPT being potentially a competitor. So figuring out future growth rates is the thing that's gonna need a lot of adjusting and a lot of insight to try to get some sort of accurate number. So today I'm gonna to start with the knowledge that I've accumulated and then we're gonna go from there. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at the historical growth rates and then I'm gonna go off and read the annual reports and get a feel for what I think the next five, maybe even 10 years growth might look like for the company. So to do that, I'm in Ticket Terminal. I'm looking at the revenue number and I'm gonna look at the last five years. So we've gone from 110 billion to 282. And I put that in a compound annual growth rate calculator and it tells me that's about 20% per annum compound annual growth rate for the revenue. Now I'm gonna do the same with gross profit. So from 65 to 156, 65 to 156 over the five years. We're just trying to get a ballpark sort of growth rate here. Okay, it's about 19%, so we're about the same. That's good to see. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to the cash flow statement. I'm gonna look at cash from operations. And I wanna see that from 37 to 91. Looks a little bit like, okay, it's 19% as well. So we're looking at about 20% historically. That's what the growth rates have been. But let's have a little look, uh, cl a little closer look at these numbers here. If we look at 2020 to 2021, there was quite a big jump. It's gone from 65 to 91. And then from 2021 to 2022, cash from operations actually is flat. It's declined. And then the trailing 12 months is gone up and again, it looks like about, about 8% from there. So whether these big numbers, if I look, go back at the revenue growth, it tells me here that the year on year growth is sort of like it was in the 20s and then it sort of dropped a little bit and then you got the big pandemic kind of boost where everything was online there for about a year, which was a big revenue driver for Google. And then we've come back down to earth a little bit here. So what do I expect this to do moving forward? That is tricky. Obviously, the company is very big now and I don't think we're gonna get this pandemic type of year again, but even if we do, I think it'll balance itself out just like it kind of has done. The question is, what number am I gonna use? I'm actually gonna use, I'll be a little bit conservative. I'm gonna use about 12%, 12% per annum. And the reason I wanted to use 12% per annum in my calculator here, 12% revenue growth, is just so I can, look, maybe they can do 15, but maybe there is some issues with ChatGPT taking some competition. I don't think so, but it's, it's possible. So let's add a little bit of that in. We've got ad revenues just overall have been declining as like macroeconomic factors affect businesses across the world. So uh, look, let's say we get maybe even if we do have a few average years, maybe a few down years, I think it's going to shake itself out at around 12%. Based on the annual reports that I've had a read, I've had a read of as well, the new projects that are coming online, I don't see anything being like wildly successful that it's going to make a big spike in the revenue. I think uh, the advertising revenue is still the core of this business. And I think that's going to be, they can optimize margins a little bit. I still feel pretty good about 12% at the moment. Now what's gonna happen is these numbers are going to change over time and I'm going to need to continually do calculations. There's a lot of nuance here. There's a lot of research that still needs to be done. I'm gonna keep track of all of this in a weekly report that I call Yes Stocks, No Stocks. And you can get this each week for free. It's no fluff, there's no BS. I just get straight to the valuations. So I highly recommend you joining as a lot of the heavy lifting is gonna be done for you. There's a link in the description. Okay, so I'm over in my intrinsic value calculator and I've put in the growth rate for the next five years at 12%. And then we're gonna slow it down a little further after that, just because, you know, this company is already in the in the trillions. Um, I think slowing it down to 8% is a fair thing to do. The return on investment goal here, we're gonna use 10%. That's for the 10%, that's for the return we want per annum out of this investment. And uh, that's just to give a like level playing field to all the other companies we look at. We use 10% to find a fair value. This is a little bit better than the S&P 500 and that's probably what institutional investors are looking for, for the extra risk of having an individual name. So 10% I think is fair value. Being such a good company with the moat that they have, uh, I think we could expect to have a multiple of around 20. The operating cash flow minus maintenance capex number. So what I've done here is I've gone into the cash flow statement. 
I've had a look at the trailing 12 months and the 2022 cash from operations number. And then I Googled maintenance CapEx of Google and it comes, you go to Guru Focus and what you do is you look for this maintenance CapEx number. It's an average over the past sort of 20 quarters, I think. So it tells me it's about 20 billion. So I take 20 billion off this, well, essentially this 99 number. So we're getting about 80, somewhere around that. I think I put it as 78, yep. 78 and so 78 billion that is in um, what we'd call operating cash flow minus maintenance capex now i just pulled the shares outstanding number the total cash they have and the total debt that they have and i pulled that from the balance sheet uh, and i've just gone down the bottom here to get the total debt number and the total cash and short-term investments number is here and my my intrinsic value calculator is telling me i'd like to buy this at to get a 10 percent return at around about 175 dollars a share so that's to get 10% return. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to my a five-year valuation model. And what I've done here is I've put in the current revenue and grown that out at 12% for the next five years to get me this five-year target revenue. Then the free cash flow margins here. So to figure this out is it's just a percentage, whatever the free cash flow is today. So which is about 80 billion, we said. 80 billion is a percentage of 289 is about 27%. So if that maintains over in five years time, we could expect a free cash flow number of 138 put in a 20 uh, multiple of that for the free cash flow. It tells me that my five-year target market cap is around 2.75 trillion. They buying back a little bit of stock and how I found that out was in the income statement. And I go down here to the weighted average diluted shares outstanding. And I can sort of see the share count has been declining ever so slightly over the years. So therefore, I'm just gonna say that's gonna continue. Shares outstanding number, the current market cap of 1.7 trillion. And I want, I'm going to get to get the five year compound annual growth rate to get us to this target market cap of 2.8 is around about 11% per annum. That's from today's prices. So depending on when you're watching this, whether it's in a year's time or whether it's in a month's time, whatever it is, this calculation still will work. All you have to you'd have to do is change the current market cap number. I mean, the, currently the year 2023. So you can sort of figure out what I think the, depending on what the share price is based on this five years, so 2028, a potential stock price of two point of two point eight trillion dollars. So there you go. That's sort of how I did the calculation here. Now what I want to do is I want to figure out so I've got the DCF number of about 170, 175, the five year number. Now to figure that out is I want to get this down to 10%, which is around about where it is now. Okay, so a little bit higher. So we could go down to, we could buy it all the way up to $145 a share. The share price at the moment is about 140, by the way, when I'm doing this recording. So somewhere in the middle here is about 160. And that's where I'm going to call fair value. Now, if I want to get a higher compound in your growth rate, what I do is I say, okay, well, what price would I, what market cap would I want to buy this at? And it's probably somewhere around... 1.1 trillion something like that and if it's 1.7 trillion today we need what's that about 30 percent fall in the stock price in my dcf method what i do is i just turn this into 22 percent if that's what the return i want to get and it says i want to buy this around about 80 dollars a share and that will be very similar for in my five-year valuation so so somewhere between eight, it looks like under a hundred anyway, maybe around eighty dollars a share is um, is good buying. So there you go. That's how I've done the fair valuation calculation for Alphabet. Uh, I'm going to have to adjust this over time with new information, um, keep on top of the annual reports, keep on top of the growth rates, things like that, which I'm going to be um, adjusting in my weekly report uh, called Yes Stocks, No Stocks, which I mentioned earlier. Link in the description for that. Hope you've enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.